Hi friends! I wanted to record what I hope will be a short video just explaining the person behind the blog and the story behind the blog. Um, my name is Simone. I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina and I am currently in training, will be done at the end of this year, to be certified ICF certified professional coach and I am using that certification to be a life and ministry coach to work with ministries to help them understand how to communicate God's Word to LGBTQ people and also to be able to help individuals and possibly families kind of work through those things as well. Again, I'm a coach. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. What that means is instead of um, kind of helping you fix traumas and things like that, I help you ask the right questions to find the answers for yourself. But the way this kind of came about is, um, I'll start when I was 19, although there are definitely some duh moments where I should have known a long time ago. But 19 was the year that I accepted Christ and I had some back and forth for a few years wanting to really have that college experience. So some of you know me from my college days and boy was she something else. And she still is, but a little bit more Jesus I guess. Um, but for seven years until I was 26, I was really, really involved in the church one way or another, whether that was leading, volunteering, um, Bible studies and things like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't a routine. Like I was in love with Jesus and I loved the community around me, still do. But um, in 2016, it was a really, really bad year for me when a lot of the foundational things about who we see and identify ourselves as, they were all attacked. So that was the year that I realized what it meant to other people that I was black in America and that it wasn't a positive thing. And that was also the year that I was disappointed by a lot of ministry leaders who, I mean, at this point I know it wasn't their fault in a way, they're humans. And so putting them on pedestals, I set myself up for disappointment, but obviously I wasn't ready for it. But in regard to this ministry, that was the year that I realized that I was also attracted to women. And it actually didn't happen because I met another woman. It happened because of the pool shootings. And my reaction was different from everyone's around me. I was devastated. I truly felt like I was being attacked. Um, all my friends and family, like they were sad about it and it was a tragedy, but I couldn't shake it. Uh, I was a receptionist at the time and I'd be at the front desk at work bawling crying looking up stories and researching these people um, and I remember going to a vigil a visual visual girl no um, and being so overwhelmed at the end of it that I remember f falling down in five o'clock traffic um, on the sidewalk but busy as ever because I was just so distraught so eventually I was like, this ain't good. And I took myself to a counselor and I told um, my Christian family that was really close to, that I had really good relationships with. And I was so lucky that I didn't have anyone who shunned me. Um, I had people who loved me, who were understanding, but still had no clue what to do with this new information. And so I'm looking at them like, ah, and they're looking at me like, oh. So it was just, no one knew what to do um, and I don't blame them for it because they weren't taught. We don't talk about these things, which is the whole point of this blog. But I did, every, I did everything right. I went to God. I went to my church family. I sought counseling and I was honest and I really tried and it was still, it was horrible. Uh, so for maybe about a year, I stuck with the church. I did everything I was doing before, but I was dying inside because I wasn't myself. And there was this big part, this big, huge thing that I just found about, found out about my identity that, um, no one was addressing, including myself, because I didn't know how. So after that didn't work, I said, you know what? I gotta, I, I can't do this. I have to go and 
see if I can find the answers elsewhere because I'm not finding them at church. I'm not finding them with God. My faith wasn't big enough to handle that. It wasn't mature enough. Um, so I went off on my own. I have some good memories from that time and I have some good friends from that time. But all in all, I still wasn't myself because there was, I was leaving one important aspect of my life, my faith, to go to another as aspect of my life, my sexuality. Um, so there was never any peace. I, I looked and I made my life real loud. I found every distraction, went everywhere I felt comfortable going to see if I could find that peace that I was looking for. And um, like I said, didn't find it. And like many other people, COVID hit. And that's when you got to sit down and really think about what's going on. <laughs> wasn't fun but God finally got me in a place it's so loud I'm so sorry God finally got me in a place to where I kind of had no choice but to listen and I'm so happy he did there was a lot of wrestling back and forth and one of the questions that I can remember well actually not really a question but the conundrum that I can remember breaking my heart over and over again is that I understood that um I didn't choose this attraction, but I chose to be a Christian, so I have no choice. This this life away from God was chosen for me. Um, I'm disqualified. And there were moments, um, like I can remember one particular night where I couldn't sleep because I was just wrestling with the understanding that either I have to be single for the rest of my life or I have to live in uh, disappointing my family and more importantly, much more importantly, being separate from God by being with a woman. And truthfully, I said, I'm not going to be single for the rest of my life. So this is it. And um, I begrudgingly made that decision that this is the life that you're gonna live Simone so just find a way to just deal with it um but God just said just talk to me let's just talk about it and so I talked I was very angry very 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 angry how could a loving God do this to me after I've already committed my life to you like this isn't hey I'm trying to get you over no I'd already committed my life to you then seven years later, this, this, um, I was very angry and I, I asked the cliche question of God, if you would just take this away, I could be a really good Christian. And eventually when I was willing to listen, God very clearly led me to understand that I don't want to take this away from you. I want to use it. This isn't, um, this isn't a weapon against you. This is a weapon for you. And I didn't know what the heck that meant. Uh, but if, oh, it's gonna pass. 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 So, um, I didn't know what that meant. But eventually, I said, okay, if you say so like if you say you can use this gain this let's do it and uh wasn't quick but eventually i got to the place where god said i want to use this to bring other people to me what you thought was going to kill you and take you away from me is what i want to use to bring people to me um so <laughs> It's been months and months and months, just about a year now, where I'm like, okay, God said he wants to use this to bring people to him. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but about three weeks ago, he said, I want you to start a blog, which I was not happy about because I was hoping and praying that he'd bring people to help me because this is a lonely place to be. I have a lot of supporters, a lot of loved ones, but they're on the sidelines and that's where they're supposed to be. This is not their calling. This is mine. Um, so 
go ahead and put a PSA out there. If this is your calling and you feel me, please come find me because I've been begging God to bring you to me. Um, and there's also a lizard, but also. Um, so here, that's where this vlog is. And God blessed me with opening my heart back up to men. And I do believe he's going to bring a hell of a man. And yes, I mean a hell of a man into my life where he can deal with all this. But um, this is this is it. God didn't save me and bring me back and give me this kind of peace and devotion just to bring me peace and devotion. Like, it's a ripple effect. Like, I feel like it's almost like the monkeys in a barrel where you take one out. But if you just take one out at a time, that's so exhausting. That's not how you play the game. You're supposed to get as many monkeys as possible. And I don't care how homophobic you are, I'm about to open up the gates and bring as many people as you thought was going to hell to heaven as possible. Um, so man, I am, I'm ready. Enough crying, enough pain. Like he is about to use it to bust open the gates of hell that has had a hold on all these people who love Christ but find themselves with same-sex attraction like God is for you and the Christian community has not been the best at communicating that but I'm doing my part to change that I want to help the people who who find themselves in the gap between their faith and their sexuality and they don't know what that means and I also want to help the people who want to help the people in that gap but just don't know how so we're in this together or I'm in this alone but I'm in this and it needs to be done and this is how we're gonna do it thank you